Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Gaurav. I'm an artist and instructor. And today we're going to talk about how to approach drawing practice. Learning how to draw can be really intimidating, especially when you're not that curious, carefree child anymore. You have grown up into someone who has seen a lot of good art and a wide variety of artists and styles. You now judge every drawing and painting based on popular trends and the so-called artistic parameters. The cumulative effect of internet and social media has exposed you to so much in so less time that it gives you a feeling of lagging behind in the race. You instantly look at amazing final results and miss out on the long-term effort and dedication that actually converts into that quality over time. You have a desire to learn and become better at art, but all of this seems far from your reach. You try to make a few attempts with high expectations that you never meet. Or even worse, you successfully copy and imitate another artwork or a photograph, get some praises and congratulate yourself that you have finally accomplished it. Why would you even need to learn anything now? People even start saying that you were born with the talent. But then, this talent of yours doesn't allow you to explore the other more valuable aspects of drawing. You are unable to design or create anything that holds an expression of your imagination and creativity. You get confined to what you see and rarely allow yourself to deviate from it. All this is because you think drawing is just a talent that people possess and not a skill that can be learnt and developed. There is so much you can do if you understand the correct approach towards drawing practice. Take drawing as a language. How do we learn a new language? We always move from simple to complex. We are first introduced to the alphabet. We learn to combine the letters of the alphabet to form words and then combine words to form phrases or sentences to convey complete thoughts. The better we understand the alphabet, the easier for us to make words and sentences. We are born with an innate perception and as we grow up, our cognitive abilities get enhanced and make us sensitive to the details in our surroundings. We tend to lose interest in the basics and look for ways to jump straight onto the details. Although sometimes we can directly learn some popular words and phrases of a foreign language, but it doesn't mean we know the language completely. It will only help us to express certain thoughts and that too with limited vocabulary. Similarly, to learn the language of drawing, we need to move from simple to complex. There are many elements and principles of drawing that you must be familiar with. Likewise, there are many approaches and exercises that you can follow depending on which phase of learning you are in and what connects with you more naturally. In this video, I want to highlight three elements that may help you to study and practice drawing in a much efficient way. Let's go back to our childhood. Do you remember drawing different shapes? Some of them had names and others were just random. You first learned to draw lines and curves and then combined them to get these shapes. How are shapes important? Let us try to find out. Look at these images and try to identify what do you see. Were you able to identify most of them? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure the answer is yes, but how? This is because our brain naturally identifies and retains the shape of things that we see. It is tough to remember the details, but very easy to remember the basic shape of anything. So whenever you observe and draw something, break it down into shapes. Try to find out how can you construct it later on your own. Let your brain interact with the shape language. Whatever you put down on the paper using this approach may not look like an impressive drawing initially, but it will certainly give you a map to follow and reach to the final drawing. And repeating this several times will give you an understanding of how you can creatively modify or manipulate the shapes to stylize your work. 
After that, we learn to combine shapes to create three-dimensional forms. Again, some of these have names and others are random. Expanding on that, now you should try to look for the structure of things once you get the shapes. This will add some depth and volume to your drawing. Try drawing through the forms as if everything is transparent. We see the form structure and depth only in the presence of light. When light falls on an object, it creates a range of values represented by highlights, midtones and shadows. Our brain reads these values of dark and light and perceives space, depth and arrangement of things in three-dimensional space. In fact, it is these value differences that we read as shapes, edges and forms turning in space. A basic knowledge of perspective can further enhance your capability to represent the three-dimensional reality onto a two-dimensional drawing surface. When you practice and apply these effectively in your drawing, you can move further on to slightly complex ideas of gesture, anatomy, color, texture, composition, etc. Do not rush into the compulsion of making finished realistic drawings. Build up on a strong foundation of the fundamentals. Always keep them with you. When you get the foundations right, everything else is just icing on the cake. Hope you enjoy your practice. I'll see you in the next one.